cities throughout the nation, thousands of persons drop out of sight each year. Why are they missing? Where have they gone? How can they be located? This building, the City Hall, houses the headquarters of a small staff of men and women who daily face the colossal task of answering those questions. An endless variety of those questions. I have here a case to be unfolded for you. We've selected this not just as an example of how the missing persons detail operates, but because we think it also tells the story of a very interesting and unusual young woman. Her name is Claudia, and her story really begins before the missing persons office entered the case. It begins the night Claudia married a young automobile salesman named Philip Rankin. Are they all still with us, honey? Only one car now. I think it's the Westons. Do you suppose they intend to follow us all the way? I know a couple of trick roads up through the hill. In another few minutes, we'll be rid of the Westons. We got rid of them, honey. Darling, couldn't we get rid of those tin cans, too? Sure, as soon as we find a place wide enough to stop. Cops! Neckers! extra plates here. We play our cards right, we can get two cars for the price of one. Yeah. Yeah. How about this just marriage sign? Should we keep it as a souvenir to hang over the mantel? I want to hang it on you, darling, as a warning to all the girls at the office. Well, here you are. Do you want to hang it on me now or later? Later. Right now you can kiss me. It's our first anniversary. Anniversary? We've been husband and wife for one hour. Well, do I get the kiss or do you want us to act like old married people? Mm, my surrender. That's all for now, Buster. <gasps> Shut up, sweetheart, or I'll put a bullet in that pretty kisser of yours. Be quiet, Claudia. The money's in my wallet. It's a little over a hundred dollars. Take it and let us alone. I got it, hands. Now let's blow. Oh, don't rush me, Eddie. It's a custom to kiss the pretty bride. <laughs> please, please. You got the money? Let her alone. Take it easy. Go help you take it easy, too. Now, why get all upset over just an old-fashioned wedding custom? <laughs> oh, hands, leave her alone. Let me go to him, please. You killed him? No, I only winged him. But if you yell again... Hey, Hans, I'll... let's get out of here. Maybe somebody heard that shot. Don't get in a hurry, Eddie. Drag that guy over by the sedan. Oh, well, listen, Hans, I can... Shut up and do as I say. I'll be with you in a minute. Don't. Please. Give us a chance. See, he's talking, sweetheart. I told you I only winged him. Get going, Eddie. Let me go! Let me go! Stop. Let me go! Stop it! Eddie, he'll take good care of you, boyfriend, so you got nothing at all to worry about. Now, my pretty little bride, let's get that custom over with and we'll all be on our way. <laughs> Boyfriend, understand? 
and sit up and pretend like we're a couple of neckers. Come on, kids, drive on. No parking here. Oh, we just stopped off, sir, to take this off and all those tin cans and the rest of that junk. And I guess we took time out for a couple of kisses. Now, there's no law that says a man can't kiss his own wife, is there? No law against it, but this is no place for a honeymoon either. We got lots of robberies around here. So congratulations to both of you and be on your way. Okay, officer. You heard what he said, sweetheart. Let's get going. Let me go back to him now. Or let me phone to have an ambulance sent back. It's hurt. Perhaps badly hurt. Okay, okay. I just want to make sure we've shook those cops. Turn left on the next side street. Is hurt? My husband. Send the ambulance here. I'll have to direct them. Please hurry. Right away. Somewhere over there. You better wait here. Help him, I think. See what you can do for his wife. No. This is car 47 reporting on that ambulance follow-up. It's a bad one. Robbery and probable homicide. Yeah, we're on Lookout Road around a half a mile west of the Crestview turnoff. They call this place Lover's Lane. Sergeant Ryan asked me to come here. I'm Claudia Rankin. Oh, yes, Mrs. Rankin. Why don't you sit down? I know the strain you're under, so I won't keep you a minute longer than necessary. Thank you. We found these license plates up in the ravine near where we found the... your husband. None of this means much to you, of course. But to us, it means we're looking for a couple of hot car men. Auto thieves. Then they're the ones... We who... think so. 
But it's only a start. We'll need your help for identification. The description you gave the officers last night wasn't very complete. You say one of them was called Eddie? That's all I heard. He called the other one Hands. Hands. Probably a nickname. Can't you give us a little more? I can't. You see, it was pretty dark. Of course, I wouldn't know them if I ever saw them again. Especially Hands. Well, that's what I'm counting on. Mrs. Rankin, these are records of auto theft operators. I'm hoping that you can pick one of them out. I'll try. Is that all I can do? You'll have to have confidence in us. We'll do everything we can. Of course. I wasn't criticizing or blaming you. I can only blame myself. Well, there's no reason for that. Oh, yes. I could have saved Philip. If, if I'd just done something when that police car stopped. I... You kept quiet to protect him. I should have known they'd kill him. You did what you thought was best at the time for his safety. We only have one job facing us now, and that's to find these men. That's all I want now. All right, then let's get started. Those pictures, look them over carefully, study them. The rest is up to us. It's our job. But there must be something I could do. Something. I know how you feel, Mrs. Rankin. We'll call you if you're needed. Are you sure there wasn't a woman along with those two men last night? A woman? Why should there be a woman? These hot car rings often use women in the racket. They have an idea that a man and a woman seen in a stolen car attract less attention than a couple of men. Here's an example. Frank and Mae Berenger, a brother and sister team. Frank's in jail now, awaiting trial. His sister's up in the state penitentiary for women serving a one-year stretch. Just the two men. There was no woman. Well, keep looking. I'll get some more cards and be back in a minute. Frank Berenger. May Berenger. These hot car rings often use women in the racket. Often use women in the racket. Often use women in the racket. Use women in the racket. Use women. Use women. Women. Frank Berenger, County Jail. May Berenger. Sentence, one year state prison. Arrested August 7th. Last year. Height five foot four. Weight 112 pounds. Color of hair. Brown. Worked in Detroit. Alias Madge Berry. Rest of Chicago. It is May Berrien. even need much alteration. Perhaps the hem might be taken up a bit. No, I'll take it just as it is. And the hat shoes and the handbag. Your name, please? It's not a charge. I'll wear it. Could you put these things in a box for me? Certainly, madam. If you'll give me the name and address, I can have them sent. It won't be necessary, thank you. I'll take them along with me. As you wish. I'll be right back. Good day, good day. May I help you, madame? I'd like a new style. Something quite different. And I'd like it bleached. Certainly, certainly, madame. An appointment later in the week, perhaps? Oh, you said you could take me today. I phoned half an hour ago. The name's Miss Carter. Oh, of course, of course, mademoiselle Carter. Oh, but that lovely hair. You want it bleached? It's 
for my boyfriend. Oh, I see. Certainly, certainly. Would you care to uh, select something from our newest style? We see you. Oh, here we are. Could you do it this way? Of course, of course. This way, Mademoiselle Carter. Marie! Most becoming, Mademoiselle. Most really charming. You're quite a different person. Yes, different person. You change, Mademoiselle. I'll give it to Marie. Oh, that's most gracious of you. Thank you very much. You will have to have it retouched, of course, in a week, perhaps. I'll phone for an appointment. Thank you very much, of course. Thank you. Au revoir. Ciao. Ciao. Marie, look what Mademoiselle left you. Oh, Mademoiselle forgot her package. Uh, well, uh, we just put it aside. She will come back for it, no doubt. No doubt. Yes? I'd like to see one of your prisoners. Frank Berenger. Sit down, please. Melody? Just a friend. Your name? Evans. Jill Evans. Frank Berenger. Hello, Frank. Hello. Won't you sit down? said a dame wanted to see me. Name don't mean a thing. I just came out here for the ride. Jill Evans. I'm a friend of your sister. She asked me to come see you. Mm hmm? When may you say that? About three days ago. You're a liar, baby. May's in the women's state pen doing a stretch. That's where I knew her. I just got out three days ago. Mm hmm? Wow. If they get any more lookers like you up there, I wouldn't mind doing a stretch in women's prison myself. I need money. A job. May says you can help me get one. <laughs> From where I'm sitting? May says you've got connections. You can send me to the right people. In the automobile business. Oh. Looks like May did a lot of talking. You two must have got to know each other real good up there, huh? We had a lot in common. Both arrested on the same day, August 7th last year. And she knows a fellow I used to know when she was May Berrien back in Chicago. Oh. How's May look these days? Fine. I think she looks just right. And I think you look just right. You say your name's Jill. My lawyer says he can spring me in a couple of weeks. Maybe you'll be around, huh? Maybe. That's partly up to you. Well, the boss don't like for me to send strangers to him direct. Do you happen to know any of the local boys in the automobile business? What about Eddie or Hans? You know them? May mention them. All right. You go see Eddie. Tell him I said you're okay. He hangs out at the Brown Jug. That's a gin mill at the corner of Spring and Samson. Just ask for Eddie? Yeah. Eddie Ennis. Best time to get him is tonight, about seven, he eats there. And, uh, don't forget me, sugar. Remember, I'm the pal that came to your rescue. I won't forget. Sergeant. This is Mr. and Mrs. Grayson. They want to sign a missing persons report. It's their daughter. No word from her since 10 o'clock yesterday morning. Here are the forms. Their daughter is Mrs. Claudia Rankin, the bride in the Lover's Lane case. Claudia was pretty hysterical when she left home, but she didn't want us to come downtown with her. She promised to phone us before noon. The girl has no other relatives in the city. There's no other place she'd go at a time like this. We'll need a complete description. Age, what she was wearing when seen last. If you don't hear from her through tonight, we'll need photographs. You can fill this out in my office if you'd like. It might be more comfortable for Mrs. Grayson. Thank you. Where'd she disappear from? From my office. I was talking to her about what happened. 
Stepped out for a few minutes. When I came back, she was gone. Amnesia? She was shocked enough for it. In fact, she might have been shocked enough for something worse than amnesia. City morgue, please. The bride in that Lover's Lane case. Oh. Morgue, it's Mike Purnell, missing persons. To keep me posted on today's Jane Doe bodies, possible suicide. She's a brunette in her early 20s. I'll have a full description for you in the next 10 minutes. Bring me a check. Eddie Ennis? Yeah? I'm Jill Evans. Can I talk to you? Yeah, but you better make it snappy. I gotta get to the ballpark. Do I know you from someplace? I'm a friend of Frank Berenger and his sister. Frank's in the pokey. So is May. So was I. It's sort of fashionable, I guess, huh? What did you want to see me about? A job. Frank said you could get me into the automobile business. Perhaps you could use me like you used May. So who's pitching tonight, Eddie? Maxie Grayson. Looks like a good game. Keep the change, Frankie. Buy yourself a mink coat, <laughs> not me. The only thing you'd ever buy a gal is maybe a catcher's myth. Maybe you'll get me a job? I don't know yet. I gotta think it over. The boss, he's a... Very careful guy. Besides, I don't want to be late. You ever go to ball games? Sometimes. Then let's go. Maybe we can talk it over between innings. Good night, Charlie. Now at bat, Mike Morella, center field. Right over the plate, Max. See, that guy couldn't hit a cow with a snow shovel. Like the game, kid? Very much, thank you. You gotta like baseball if you're a friend of Eddie Ennis. That right, kid? That's right, kid. Hey, Eddie. Your new girlfriend's a good kid. And pretty, too. Yeah. Come on, strike him out, Maxie. Watch them pitches, kid. I will, if you'll watch your beer. Sure. Hey, Eddie didn't introduce us. What's your name, kid? Jill. Jill Evans. <laughs> Hello, Jill. My name's Sam. Hi, Sam. That a boy, Maxie. Hey, the boys are going great tonight, huh? Hey, I need another beer. You want one? No, thanks. Just tell me one thing. You think there's a chance? Oh, sure, the way the boys are playing tonight, we can't lose. We'll beat these guys by four or five runs. I didn't mean that. I mean about my job. Oh, yeah. Maybe you got a chance. Uh, we're short of a guy, so maybe you're in. Anyhow, till Hands can get cooled off. Hands? Who's Hands? Oh, you won't know him. He's a guy who got into a beat. Kamenik now pitching for the visitors. Say, watch that fella Kamenik warm up. He's got a plenty fastball. Is Hands the boss? No. You want to meet him, uh, the boss, I mean, then you first got to prove to him you're okay. You can help me pull a job tomorrow. What kind of a job? You really want to work, don't you? Then meet me going to Spring and Laurel tomorrow afternoon, 3 o'clock sharp. You got that? Spring and Laurel, 3 o'clock. Now at that, Augie Bilson, shortstop. Come on, Augie, give it a ride. Over the fence, Augie. Captain, uh, Claudia's parents offered a reward. I told them that the police department would see to posting the notices. It'll take a lot of notices to cover a city of this size. Yes, sir, but it'll help if even part of the city knows we're looking for her. Morning papers gave us a good break, too. Did you check on the Jane Doe bodies this morning? We'll get the morgue checks all right. 
Kelleher seems to think she's a suicide type. Good day, madame. Would you kindly be seated for one moment, madame? Uh, it's Madame Baumholtz. Oh, of course, of course. Excuse me, madame. I mean, officer. This brunette by any chance a customer of yours? No, she's not one of mine. She's a criminal, yes. She's just missing. Oh. If she happens to show up here or any young gal that looks like her, be sure to call missing persons. Certainly, certainly. Missing persons. But tell me, why should the young lady come to my place? We're contacting every beauty parlor and every eating house in the city. Missing persons has a theory. If she's alive, she has to eat. And being a woman, she probably goes to beauty parlors now and then. Clever, clever. Is there anything else? Not today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, maybe next week I might need a permanent. Yeah, of course, of course. <coughs> wait a minute, officer. Just wait. Wait a minute. I think. Yes, I know this girl. It's, um, um, Mademoiselle Carter. Carter? What address? Oh, address? Uh, no address. She didn't give one. But I remember her quite well. She came here to this place to have her hair bleached. As a matter of fact, she left a package. I guess she forgot it. I kept it for her. I thought she might come back for it. Good. Very good. Clever, huh? You say this Miss Carter had her hair bleached? Uh, that's what they said at the beauty parlor. She wanted to be a blonde. You boys want to see me? Look familiar? Why, sure, that's what Claudia Rankin wore. Where'd you get them, the morgue? In a beauty parlor. It begins to look as if our missing brunette wants to be missing. Your posters won't work anymore. I had an idea about that, Captain. This Pierre at the beauty parlor said she picked her new hairstyle from a chart. I had him draw it on this poster just the way she looked after she was remodeled. Hmm. Have a whole batch of these printed up with the new hairdo. And uh, you owe Officer Baumholtz a free lunch. Baumholtz, you're right on your toes. And to a flat foot, that's a real compliment. Hi, Jill. Hello, Eddie. Slide all the way across. You're going to drive. Where do I drive? Straight ahead. Take it easy through here while I brief you. Brief me? Yeah, give you the layout. There's an auto park about a mile from here, straight ahead. It's called Jack's Auto Park. Can you remember that? Of course, Jack's Auto Park. There's only one parking attendant on duty this time of day, so the whole thing ought to be easy. Now listen careful. You'll get to the auto park about five minutes ahead of me. Pull into the driveway with a flat tire. Where do I get the flat tire? In an alley about a block this side of the auto park. I'll show you where it is. Keep going. Okay, Jill, I'll be seeing you at the brown jug. Sorry, lady, we're all filled up. I forgot a flat tire. Yeah, you sure have. There's a spare in the luggage compartment and some tools. Think you can change it for me? Well, it isn't one of the jobs I'm paid for. Would a dollar be all right? Yeah, I guess so.
How do you suppose it happened? I don't know. Anything can happen. Thanks to you, I won't be late for my dentist appointment. be four bits, sir. Thank you. Call again. Do you have a phone? You can use mine in the booth. Thanks. Operator, please connect me with the police. Police, I want to report a stolen car. No, it's not my own. It was just stolen from Jack's Auto Park on Spring Street. It's a green Lincoln sedan. This year's model. License number 2D7876. No, I can't give you anything more. I just happened to see it stolen. No, I can't give you my name. I just got a report on Claudia Rankin, but it's a blame crazy. We better file it in the wastebasket. Never file anything in the wastebasket. What's the report? Well, about an hour ago, a man stole a sedan out of Jack's Auto Park. Five minutes ago, the parking attendant saw one of our posters on Claudia. He swears that she acted as decoy while her accomplice stole the car. And that is a bit hard to swallow. And then swallow this. Somebody telephoned an anonymous tip on the stolen car, and the call was traced right back to the auto park. The parking attendant says that the same woman was the only one who used the phone. Claudia. She helps steal a car and then reports it stolen? And then disappears again. Does it make any sense? Well, if she's an amnesia victim, then maybe somebody's using her for a tool. And she needs more help than ever. Keep looking for her. Yeah, you're right on time. I got the hot sedan parked out back. In a few minutes, we'll run it to the garage. After we talk to the boss. He's here? And waiting to meet you, babe. This is her. Care to sit down? Eddie didn't introduce us. I'm Jill Evans. Yeah, and this is Mr. Simcata. Eddie tells me you're a friend of Frank Berenger's. A friend of Frank's sister. May and I were in the pokey together. Oh. You knew May Berenger pretty well? You get to know each other in a prison cell. She's okay, Mr. Simcata. That flat tire gag worked like a charm. She had that parking attendant eaten right out of her hand. No kidding, baby, you were okay. I did what you told me. So for both of us, it's payday. That's for helping Eddie. It seems kind of light, it's because I've got lots of expenses. Take her over to the garage, Eddie. I uh, like to use women in this business. It helps. You proved it today. I'm grateful. Keep in touch with me at the garage. Oh, uh, that's all, Eddie. You better get that sedan over on the assembly line. Hmm? So long. So long. Your car? Well, yeah. Did I do something wrong? Not unless you call driving a stolen car wrong. Stolen? What do you mean? Your license number. It's on my list. 
Description of the car fits, too. Boy, that's ridiculous. Maybe some crazy friend of mine did it as a gang. It's happened before. Yeah, or maybe it's just a mistake. That's happened, too. Pull into the curb and let's find out. Well, sure, officer. I can identify myself. This is all a mistake. <laughs> Squeak, huh, baby? Still is. Yeah, she's okay. You better get those doors shut fast. This car's hotter than a two-dollar pistol. Lock him up, Al! I thought you said this job was a cinch. How come this heap got hot so fast? How do I know? Maybe the owner came back for his car sooner than we figured. Ah, don't be nervous, baby. We're all friends here. This is where we do the facelifting. Facelifting? Yeah. When the boys get through with a car in here, its own mother wouldn't know it. And you better work fast on this when a cop chased me ten blocks. Get the sander, Joe. We'll do the paint job first. You can go now, Jill. Better check with us tomorrow. Maybe you and me will be taking a trip out of the state. Oh? Yeah, we sell these hot heaps out of the state. Mr. Sincata might want you to go along with me, so we can look like a happy husband and wife. But I have a boyfriend who might not like that. Tell him this is strictly business. I'll be seeing you. Hi, Hans. Who's the doll? It's a new girl Mr. Sincata hired. She's a friend of the Barringers, May and Frank. You want to do me a favor, Eddie? Bring her back. We'll have a few drinks, just the three of us. Forget it. You throw parties around here and the boss will send you to look for another hideout. That's all you ever think about, dames. You think they'll ever replace baseball? The way you saw murder cases? By walking the floor? I'm working on it. Working on it. Two names. Claudia heard the younger one called Eddie. The other's some kind of a nickname. Hands. Yeah, a lot of guys named Eddie, I guess. Yeah, well, there are not a lot of guys named Hands. I've been looking at that blackboard until I'm almost cross-eyed, trying to figure out somebody with a criminal record nicknamed Hands. H-A-N-D-S. Maybe you haven't got a spell right. Well, how would you spell Hands? Sure. Hans. First name, foreign. Like in Hans Christian Anderson. Or like in Hans Soderling. Hello. Get me the Department of Arrest Records. Hurry it up. This is Kelleher, homicide. Get me the file on Hans Soderling. Yeah, Hans Soderling. I'll be right over. Looks something like the man Claudia tried to describe. This may be a break. And look at this. Two arrests, suspected auto theft. One conviction, auto theft. This ties in with the hot license plates we found up there in the hills. He's your man, all right. Now all you gotta do is find him. Let me have the radio room. This is Kelleher, homicide. Broadcast an all points pickup for Hans Soderling, alias Henry Sands, alias Harry Saunders. Yeah. Yeah, it's local and teletype. Description. Age 36.
Oh, yes, yes, Mademoiselle Carter. You came back to have your hair retouched. You said to come back, so I'm here. So, and I think I left a package here the other day. Oh, a package, of course. A, a, a big box. You kept it for me? Well, I, uh, I, I took it home for safekeeping. Uh, well, it's right around the corner. I can get it for you right away. Uh, Marie, would you kindly step this way? Marie, will you kindly take care of uh, Mademoiselle Carter? Police. Missing persons. The Bureau of Missing Persons. The poster's finally paid off. We located Claudia Rankin. Where? In the same beauty parlor where she had her hair bleached. I'm on my way now. Wait a minute, Mike. I'll be right with you. Your job may be over, but mine's just starting. Uh, pardon, Mademoiselle Carter. Marie. Mademoiselle Carter, there are two gentlemen to see you. Mrs. Rankin. How did you find me here? This is Mike Purnell, missing persons. Finding you has been his job. Your package. Seems you left it here last time you were in. Claudia, I've been acting for your parents. You know, they haven't any idea what happened to you. Don't you think you ought to get in touch with them? I'd rather not. They might try to stop me from what I'm trying to do. And what's that, Mrs. Rankin? I'm trying to find the man who killed my husband. So are we, Mrs. Rankin, but that's our job. It's no... No job for a woman? Oh, yes, it is. What would you say if I've already located one of them? The young one, Eddie. Are you sure? Don't ask me to tell you where he is. Oh, I'll report him to the police, all right. Not yet. Not until he's served his purpose. You expect him to lead you to the other one? They work together. He's already mentioned Hans several times. Just Hans, not the last name. Not Hans Soderling or Sands or Sanders? Why, that's the man. You've arrested him? Only have his identity now. He's no doubt hiding out. We've broadcast. Don't you see now why I have to go on? I can locate him for you. Mrs. Rankin, we have our own methods of locating him. If you'll give us the information on this, Eddie, we can work from there. We'll round up the whole ring no, in a matter of... No, next step is my own. Changed my hair, my style of clothes. I met this Eddie. I can get him to talk about where this hand soddling is. Claudia, we are only working in your own interests and for your parents. But I can't let you walk out of here and be a missing person all over again. Not when there's danger. Oh, wait a minute, Mike. Ms. Rankin, we're just as anxious to find this man as you are. Suppose we make an agreement with you. Suppose we give you 24 more hours on your own. That's all I need, I'm sure. Just another day. And the moment you learn where this man is, you promise to do nothing further. Just call me. That's all I ever intended. Mike here will phone your parents that you're alive and well. Make sure you stay that way. She wants to chew the fat with you. An old friend of mine? Sure. May Berenger. She just got paroled. Funny thing, though, May says she don't remember any Jill Evans up there. You wouldn't be hiding out under an alias, would you, Jill? Anything wrong in it? Mm, not in our social set. Come on, let's chin with May. Mr. Sincata, I just came by to check with you and Eddie. I'm on my way to meet my boyfriend. Ah, oh, let him wait. Doing good. Come on. There she is, May. I was right, too. The 11th, it's an alias. Hello, May. Don't you recognize me in my civilian clothes? What's the matter? You two have a fight up there? Maybe it's because I used to be a redhead. You do know her, don't you, May? I know her. Hi, kid. Sit down, we'll uh, talk over old times. 
Want a beer, Jill? No, thanks. Don't have time. Jill has a date. You're among friends, Jill. What's your real name? Won't Jill be enough? <laughs> Up in stir, we called her Red. You remember Red? The name won't fit. Now you changed to Blonde. Well, I'd better run along now. I'll stick around a while. We haven't had a chance to gab about old friends and old places. We ladies got a lot to talk over, Mr. Sincata. Why don't you join the gentlemen at the bar? Oh, sure, sure. Never like to hang around when the gals start talking about knitting and things. Uh -huh. Okay, honey, let's have it. How come you told those boys I'm a friend of yours? I needed a job. Any job. I heard about Mr. Sincata and Eddie. And I knew they wouldn't trust me unless I gave a reference. How come you pick on me? Because you knew I was in the lockup and wouldn't be around to give the lie to you? Yes. Where'd you hear about me? From a fellow we both used to know. He was Dutch. Dutch what? That's all. He had good reason not to use anymore. I don't remember any Dutch. Where'd he say he knew me from? Chicago. When you were made Berrien. Well, he didn't know you too well, I guess. It was your brother he worked with, Frank. Where'd you know Frank? Detroit, I think. And here. They used to work with another fellow, too. I don't know him. His name is Hans Sauterly. Although he's sometimes called Henry Sands or Sanders. And then I can't remember this fellow that sure gets around. He sure gave you the references, I This Mr. Sincata, Eddie. They have to be pretty careful who they take in with them. I'll say they do. What I'm getting at is, if you told them what I just told you, they might not trust me. I've got to have work. I help them with one job, counting on another. What you're getting at, you want me to keep this just between us ladies. Exactly. Will you? You uh, say you already pulled one job with them? With Eddie. How much they pay you? Forty dollars. Cheapskates. You still got it, the 40? I could be a chiseler, but I won't. I'll take half. Half the 40 and half out of your next job. Sort of a pay-as-you-go plan. That all right with you? Yes, it'll have to be if I want to keep my job. Not now. Here comes some cutter. You can settle with me later. You ladies finished your cab yet? Sure, sit down. Thanks. Your uh, date could wait a while, Jill. I'm lining up a job for tomorrow. Let's talk it over when Eddie gets here. All right, slugger, get a hold of it. Hi, Eddie, I'm late. Just a couple of runs, huh? How you doing, Eddie? I was doing fine till now. Where's the kid tonight? Kid? What kid? You know. Kid you had with you the other night. Look, her real name's Claudia Rankin. Did you already collect the reward, or shall we split the 500? What are you talking about? Oh, so you don't know, huh? It means I'm getting you right into 500 bucks. Let's find her and split the reward. Where did you get this? I seen it on the wall of the post office, so I took it. Look, she's missing and she's worth 500 bucks. I figured it this way, Eddie. You and me are pals. So we put... Hey, wait a minute, Eddie. You're not cutting me out uh, of the deal. Thanks, Sam. I'll make it up to you. like Eddie brought bad news. Yeah, his team must have lost the game. Excuse me. You can give me the 20 now. I don't want you to think I'm a chiseler, but I'm fresh out of pokey and I need new wardrobe. Where'd you get this? Ballpark. It's the bride from up in the hills the other night. She changed her hair, but it's the same one. The one hands tried to... It's the same dame. Look, they even got her name here. What do you suppose she joined up with us for? Because she's working for the cops, stupid. Why else? Yeah? Well, that means I'm tagged. You're tagged. We all are. Unless she didn't report it yet. Unless maybe she's waiting to find hands. Thanks, Red. As long as the payoffs keep coming on time, I won't give you any trouble. No, oh, let's button up. Here comes the barroom athlete. 
I'm sorry to bust this up, gals, but the boss says we got work to do. A new job right now. Tonight? The lady can't even finish your beer. Plenty of time for you, May. This job is for Jill and me. You ready? But my date. <laughs> the boss says business before pleasure. Let's go. Good night. Good night. The dames are stooly for the cops. What's the idea of covering up for her? What do you mean? You lied. You didn't know her from state prison. I thought I did honest. There was a dame up there. Of course, it's a pretty big place. Maybe I made a mistake. You stay here, stupid. Hey, Charlie. This lady's gonna wait here till I get back. See that she's comfortable. idea what job we're supposed to do? Nope, Mr. Sincata just said for us to come here. Come on, baby, out. I thought Sincata was coming over. He'll be here any minute. Stay right there to let him in. Let's go, kid. Go on up to the office. I want you to meet somebody. Meet somebody? Who? Go on up and find out. You're not afraid to meet a friend of mine, are you? Of course not. Why should I be afraid? I know a reason. It's her hands. She bleached her hair and changed her clothes, but it's her, all right. Eddie, who is this man? The Department of Missing Persons sent out posters on her. I seen one myself. I gave it to Mr. Sincata. He'll show it to you in a few minutes. It even tells about her, her name and, and bleaching her hair. Eddie, you made a mistake. Let me take a good look at your pretty kisser. Eddie, please, I never saw this man before in my life. Oh, come now, sweetheart. Take a good look. You know me, all right. How could you ever forget me? You shouldn't have done that. Ah, she swung on me, so I slugged her back. Help me carry her over to Eddie's car. Not my car, no dice. All right, you chicken liver. The sedan, then. You open up the luggage compartment. Maybe we ought to wait for Mr. Sincata. Say, you put her in there, she can't get in the air, she can't breathe. Oh, what difference does that make? Luggage compartment. Han says he'll drive her out of town for us. This is no job for Hans. Why not? I'm the one dodging the murder rap. That's the point. You're too hot to drive anywhere. I'm not. Besides, this car is registered in my own name. If I'm accidentally stopped, I'm as clean as a whistle. Open up. I'll be back in the morning. Routine check. Mind if we look around? Now, what's the trouble? Robbery. About two blocks from here. A couple of fellows got away, but they might still be in the district. You mean you think they snuck in here? Uh, my name's Sincata. I own the place. The boys in the night shift, they always keep the doors locked. Even burglar alarms on those windows. 
So I'll guarantee your fugitives didn't get in here. But if you care to, look around. Well, I don't think you'll need me for anything. What's the hurry? I got a telegram from my wife's folks. Her mother's had a stroke. I have to get Flagstaff. We'll only keep you another minute, then you can be on your way. Okay, back there. Where are your keys, Mr. Sankara? My keys? What for? I want to open the luggage compartment. Sorry. And I thought I could do it alone. We've been following you every minute since we talked to you in the beauty shop. We didn't want anything to happen to you. <laughs> 